today at Mystic Ashram, we're going to be exploring 23andMe Ancestry Result. Um, first of all, I would like to say that uh, although much humor is made out of the spitting portion of this test, seriously, it took two tries. I mean, just don't get nervous, don't be dehydrated, and of course don't eat or drink or smoke anything before 30 minutes. And this is one of the easiest tests I've ever completed. So, you know, I'm not going to do a five minute segment with me trying to spit in a tube. I'm going to save us all from that and just skip that. So, I'm also going to say if you want the test for under $100, try eBay. Uh, there's lots of people who stockpile these tests, and I chose the Ancestry Plus Health one because part of my whole motivation here for many years has been to improve my health and I figured this will definitely nail it. Um, so I wanted to find out as much po possible information as these tests could provide. Um, I also had a lot of conspiracy theories about well my fingerprint, my, my DNA, all of this stuff is going into various databases all over the world and Google controls and yada yada yada. Yeah right, well I have a, a number, I have a bunch of other crap. This can just go along with all the other crap they have on me. And honestly, if they know and I don't, I'm at an automatic disadvantage whoever they are, right? Um, I think we all know who they are. So anyway, I'm, I just want to tell you that yes, I have submitted myself to um, like the full database and survey questions and participation to the they. And we're going to see what happens with that. Also, I wanted to tell you um, just as a preamble what I always expected my results to be. Because this will be fun. Because this will be fun. Um, I, I always expected my results to be uh, Russian Ashkenazi Jewish from the Belarus and uh, Lithuania area. Um, Cherokee uh, uh, Scots-Irish, Ulster, Scots. Um, some uh, Mohawk, Delaware, um, some Shawnee, uh, and some French, and yet more Scots, Ulster, Irish, maybe a little English, okay, let's just be fair, a skosh of the English Welsh thing, and I am definitely, you know, Although people make a big deal out of Elizabeth Warren and her 3% of false Cherokee heritage, let me just say for the record that there was a big whitewashing program in the late 19th century when all the tribes were decided to be documented as Cherokee regardless of who they married or who they were. So, you know, making fun of people saying they're Cherokee all the time is, is really putting down about 500 nations that are in North and South America. I just want to put that out there in Central America. I just, I just want to say, next time you put somebody down for the whole Cherokee thing, just be aware that there was like some document keeping that, that was a little, um, you know, arbitrary on that one, and you know, all natives are Cherokee if they live in the continental United States at that point. Okay, and also, if anybody has 2% or 3% of anything, they really shouldn't be made fun of, because that just means that that ancestor lived about 300 years ago. Okay, there were probably about 16 ancestors at that point in time that contributed to that individual, and one of them happened to be such and such, and that's where the 2% comes from. All right, and it doesn't really break down into fractions. That's the other thing I was always confused about, which is, you know, if, if you're, you're, you get 50% from this parent, 50% from that parent, and then 25% from this grandparent, 25% from that grandparent. No, it doesn't work that way with humans. 
Well, one sibling can get one assortment of DNA from the parents, another sibling can get another assortment, and they'll have about 25% in common. Um, but uh, sometimes the ancestry ends up in one sibling and not the other, and, and you know, vice versa. So, you know, that, those, those things kind of, um, they are interesting, you know. So, so everybody who writes off genetic testing is like, well, we're all 99% the same thing and the rest is just like junk DNA is, is totally quoting from about 20 years ago. And uh, please do your own research on this one. Um, also, I don't really think that sociopolitical like stuff really goes along with DNA at all. And, and this, this entire uh, semantics question about ethnicity, race, yada, yada, yada. I'm also expecting some Lungeon DNA. Uh, so, you know, if I have some African American heritage, it'll show up. Now, uh, we could get some wild cards. Who knows? Let's see. Okay, so they they give you an app that you put on your phone, and and the app lets you conduct these surveys. And the app told me that I had my results in, and they were sooner than expected. Okay, here we go. Oh boy. Ah, okay. Your DNA, 39%. The most of me that comes from anywhere is 39% of something. And it says your DNA suggests that you are 39.4% British and Irish with ancestry from eight other populations. So, yay UK, you own me. <laughs> All right. I, I guess the name Megan Finley, that might have been a clue to the UK Irish ancestry, but hey, you know, you never know. All right, so what's the other 8%? What are the other eight nationalities here, being all American and such? We have genetic diversity in my country, as long as the polit politicians don't have anything to say about it. All right. Ancestry timeline goes back to 1810. Parental inheritance. One of my parents is almost entirely shades of pink. The other parent is a rainbow of shades varying from pink, red, blue, light blue, orange, and yellow. That's exciting. All right, so let's see what this says. Ooh. And they, they've got handy travel posters here, to just in case you can't read nationalities. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so we have, let, let's go back up to percentage, okay? All right. Let's see what this says. I'll just read them out. Your results have been recalculated as part of our recent update. So thank you, everybody who subscribed to 23andMe. You upped the database, and they were able to pinpoint more crap on me. I appreciate that. All right. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm going to get letters. I'm going to get letters from someplace because... Here, here, here's the map. That's that's why you probably can't see it on the screen. Um, and and I'll take screenshots. Um, well, European says ninety nine point one percent. Wow, Northwestern European sixty eight point five percent. British and Irish. Greater London, UK, County Cork, Ireland. Wow, plus 15 regions. So Ireland and Britain in general. Wow, they, they can tell 15 regions. Yeah, I, I got 16 places to go in the UK. Who wants to book my tour? Uh, 39.4. French and German, particularly North Rhine, Westphalia, Germany. I could use some spa products. If anybody wants to ship me spa products from Westphalia, they're one of my favorite beauty uh, collections. 
All right. Yay. Going to spa land in Germany. All right, finish. I'm finish. I'm a Laplander <laughs> by 0.7%. So yeah, um, call Santa. Uh, round up those reindeer. Scandinavian, 0.4%. Let's just say I've always heard these tales about Canute. Canute was a really interesting guy. And so was Harold Bluetooth and all those Viking dudes. They, they, they left a mark. All right. Broadly Northwest, Western Nor European, broadly Northwestern. We don't know what this means. They mean they traveled a lot in Northwestern Europe. 10.6%. Okay. Oh dear. Oh. Oh, oh, interesting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, um, sorry, we've turned into every YouTube ancestry video ever. We have found, we have found some interesting stuff. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Me with my 99.1% European heritage, which I'm supposed to get all sad about. We found interesting stuff. Southern European, 2.1%. Italian, 1.5%. Get that Tarantella ready. We're dancing tonight. Sardinian. <laughs> This is funny, because I actually thought, hey, <clears throat> I'm always attracted to, to Greek culture. Wouldn't it be interesting if I had, like, Cretan or Sardinian or something, you know? <laughs> Sardinian, 0.1%. Right on. Um, got my tambourine. Uh, broadly Southern, Southern European, 0.5%. Okay. So, so, wow, that, that doesn't really sound like a lot of percentages there for Southern Europe, but, you know, we still have a lot to go through here. All right, now, this is, this is one of the, the weirdest things I have ever seen, because I'm now 43 years old, I have done a lot of studies on various people, and I've noticed... People involved with a lot of verbal acuity and show business type stuff and, you know, I don't know, like they model or act or they're always around that or something. Anyway, they tend to have some, like, East European Ashkenazi Jewish heritage. It's, it's a thing. I don't know. Maybe, you know, the Sephardic people stayed in Southern Europe and, and the Ashkenazi swept up to Northern Europe and the people who swept up to Northern Europe, they, they like theater and writing plays and smuggling their plays out of Eastern Europe. So anyway, this really blows my mind because it says 26.3 Ashkenazi Jewish. Yeah. Woohoo! Holla from the Bronx! Alright, so that Upper East Side shopping trip when I was a child totally, totally meant those toys were mine. Okay, I'm just telling you that's totally written off. It can be seen 26.3 Ashkenazi Jewish. They say they're not around. I've always looked for people who look like me. Here we are. All right, so you can count me down with like 
Robert Downey Jr. or or that chick who played the socialist baker in that one movie about the tax collector. I don't know. You'll know which one I mean. All right. Anyway, she Ashkenazi Jewish. All right. Anyway. All right. We got the eyes is the thing. It's the dramatic, large, open eyes. All right. Uh, <clears throat> All right, see all tested populations, because we just got, like, broadly European at 2%. So, if for anybody who's ever said, I talk too much, no, no, I, I got the talking gene, man. All right. Your results. 68.5. Northwest European, British and Irish, 39.4, French and German, 17.4. Oh, and we got breakdowns here, too, so so they're, they're like, they will tell me on the British and Irish, the highly likely match is United Kingdom, likely match is Ireland. Guernsey was not detected at all. And let's see here. Ooh, they got a specific region in the United Kingdom. So, basically, I'm from the northeastern lower border of Scotland and the northeastern northernmost part of the United Kingdom, and then I'm, like, way down there in Wales, like, right on the Cornish coast, you know, like, really early Britannia. So, uh, apparently, I got the most from regions associated with, like, uh, um, the, the warrior, uh, Queen Boudicca and stuff like that. All right, so that's neat. Um, okay, so we can go over all that. It says a a tale of two scones, and this will be kind of interesting because it divides Ireland to UK, and and we go all the way through the UK. So so apparently. This is my my mother's side is what what this is. This is um like really old uh Anglo-Saxon kings and Bretons and like uh way way back there prior to um Edward uh so that's kind of neat. Um but it's it's also kind of strange because no offense to Great Britain, but I was always like, I'm sure I'm Scots Irish. I'm really sir. What the heck? Alright. So we got Greater London, United Kingdom, County Cork, Ireland, and fifteen other regions of Britain, but one in specific which I think is like the lower Cornwall. It's in the southeast, southeast. And I'm sure if I knew more British geography, I could read the map instantly. All right. So the French and the German, North Rhine, Westphalia. I'm not surprised by this too much. I was, I was curious how much German there was, but I am related to People from Clark County, Indiana, who went to Texas, and they have a lot to do with livestock and importing cattle and stuff to from Germany, apparently, where they had connections for such cows. And um, so, let's see what we got. We got, um, it, it would seem to indicate... This is cool, because, well, it says, no, sorry, you don't have any Dutch or Belgian. I've always been really close to Dutch-Belgian culture. It, it has um, the eastern part of Germany, just north of Luxembourg on here. Um, so, like, 
basically um, northern Germany, I'm surprised. Northern Germany, not so much. Uh, southern Germany, around München, uh, which is Munich, um, kind of midway point. And the most is actually from the, the uh, Netherlands-Belgian uh, border area. So I think that's pretty interesting. Um, because I've always been attracted to the Binny Lux. Um, so this finish thing, 0.7%, I'm an elf. I've always known I'm an elf. And all elves come from Finland. Uh, so they're trying to identify more about Finnish people, they say. Scandinavians. But, but there is plenty of information, I assure you. I'm just not going to read it all right now. I want to keep the video concise. So 0.4% of Scandinavian ancestry. That would mean it happened a really long time ago. And, and it's, you know, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Iceland, people basically who had some interchange with England, most likely. Um... Although they could have traveled the Rhine up to Germany and hung out there. I'm not saying they didn't. And then there's the whole Ashkenazi thing. So, you know, connections to Eastern Europe and all that. So the Vikings could have gone there. All right. Um, broadly Northwestern European. It, it, it includes everybody. Congratulations. You're a Northwestern European. Um, they, they go all the way through the North and Baltic Seas as far south as France. Um, so, and that's just 10.6%. Um, the more people who join these databases and have these tests done, the more pinpoint they can be about this stuff. Now, this is, this is the, the big, the big strange shakeup and, and the weird, I mean, this is really how, this is really out there, man. I gotta tell you, this is out there. Doesn't mean that I don't have any Native American heritage, let's just say, or African American heritage, or whatever. Just means that it happened before, like, say a thousand years ago, and it's not gonna show up on this test. So, sorry kids, that's the way it works. The Southern European and Ashkenazi Jewish, which is a really weird combination. You would imagine with the Southern European, you're going to have Sephardic Jewish. And I was even considering, hey, you know, Mediterranean, you know, maybe it could be Turkish Jewish, which is like Mizrahi, right, or something. No, Ashkenazi Jewish, which is really fascinating because I watch a lot of videos on YouTube where people get, hey, a surprise 2% Ashkenazi Jewish, and it blows them away, and they can't even pronounce Ashkenazi, and they got to look that part up, and a bunch of other stuff, and that's fine. I'm glad that, that they, they want to explore that. Um, there seems to be a lot of... Uh, not great information outside the Ashkenazi Jewish community for people who are outside of that community, like, welcome to Ashkenazi Jewish music and culture and food. You know, there aren't that many that I've explored. It's more like, celebrate your Jewish heritage and this is how you do it. Um, but I, I did attend shul in San Francisco and all that kind of thing. Now this Italian, 1.5%. It's the art history degree and the musicology. Thanks a lot. Just want to say. All right. So, um, so they do not include, they do not include the Ashkenazi heritage or the Italian or their Sardinian or broadly Southern European or any of that. They don't include that with the the Northwestern European at all.
And and if there's a delay between the time that I took these tests and the, and reported this to you and the time I upload this video, <laughs> there's a good reason. <laughs> but I, I wanted to make the, the debut video now. <laughs> I'm candid. Okay, so 216 populations it took to generate this test that they have in their little database there. Oy vey. I don't know what the deal is. Hey. Okay, ooh, ooh, they got a breakdown of the Italian, of the Southern European and the Italian and that, that stuff, I think. They, they might. I mean, I'm hoping, what, all right, all right, we, because, because it's not, it, it, what, what, all right, congratulations, you're not a Native American, you're an Italian, hey, get a breadstick, join the buffet, I'm, I'm an Italian in hiding who's actually an Ashkenazi Jew, <laughs> sorry. All right, my my twenty six point three percent Ashkenazi Jewish, which means please light the candles and turn off the overhead fluorescence. You're blinding me. I'm appearing so white I can't take a photograph. <laughs> And, and it also, you know, I mean, I, I naturally migrate to Miami Beach. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> uh, it's it's going to, okay, in America, it's going to tell me about Ashkenazi Jewish heritage here for the 26.3%, but it's, oh, and, uh, okay, great. Um, I'm going to do a separate video on the health results because we're already at like 26 minutes or something and, you know, I, uh, for an unscripted video, I, I realize, you know, people can't hold attention that long. All right. In America, Ashkenazi Jewish genetic heritage reaches high levels in New York, California, Florida, and the Northeast, but remains at low levels <laughs> in places like Idaho, Wyoming, Nebraska, and Missouri. <laughs> Gee, uh, I'm shocked. <laughs> the, those are all, I'm, I'm sorry to people in Idaho, Wyoming, Nebraska, and Missouri. I just, I know they're not used, they're, they're not known for their delicatessens, let's just put it that way. All right, so many people have 100%, 50%, 25% Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry, which typically means they have four, two, or one Ashkenazi Jewish grandparents, respectively. There are also many people with 1 to 15 percent of this ancestry reflecting Ashkenazi Jewish heritage that is more than two generations removed. Whew. So when granddad was a Russian Jew, granddad really was a Russian Jewish bomber pilot, okay, a bomber coordinator guy with the Norton bomb site, like Gave his life for freedom. Thank you, Granddad. You really were an Ashkenazi Jew. Okay, awesome. Um, so, I'm going to have to see all this and uh, get back to you. Not, not really, you know, but, but see, this, this is, it says that, like, I got... I could have two grandparents who were Ashkenazi, I could have one, we, you know, it's just a lot of Ashkenazi I got, a quarter. So, um, and, and that's neat. Uh, so this 40% British-Irish, uh, 17.4, 40%. 
French and German. Which is cool. Expecting like more French, honestly. Um and let's see, the Southern European, the, the Italian thing has a link. Some of them are linked, some of them are so vague, they're like, you figure it out. 1.5%, which I don't really understand. And, and if you, so we're working to identify more about Italian ancestry. Uh, and it tells me vaguely about it, Italy. And Venice is underwater for, for those who know right now. Um, which is a trip. And uh, I'm going to have to contextualize this, I guess, in my head. And for right now, I'm going to leave this video at like close to half an hour as I can. Thank you so much for joining me while I continue to explore and figure out and generally go where other Ancestry23 users have gone before. Broadly Southern European, 0.5%. Hmm. Broadly European, 2.1%. Uh, Trace Ancestry, 0.8%. Ooh, ooh. We got stuff. All right, so I'm 0.3% African hunter-gatherer. Right on. I'm 0.3%? Uh, no. It, it says it's not detected, but then it says 0.3%. So Nigerian. Hi. Hi, Nigeria. Um, 0.1%. Broadly West African. Uh... Recent ancestry in Americas. Nothing from the Caribbean. No Mexico and Central America. No South America. So, just a, a squish. A squish of the African. Very nice. Very, very nice. So, and, and I guess that's what they meant. I, I, by, by the general Southern European. It's weird. This is all very weird because of all the minute traces that they report. Reference data sets. Let's see what that is. Oh, it's about the human genome project and how many proportions, how many like uh divvying up of each group they do. So we we've it's Sardinian 0.1%. That's kind of colorful. They are the outliers of the genetic landscape of Europe. Thanks to geographic isolation of their rugged island home off the mainland of Italy. Over the centuries, Sardinians resisted assimilation by occupying forces and have managed to preserve a few unique traditions, including cantu a tenore, a hunting style of overtone singing. A haunting style of overtone singing practiced to this day. Singing. Hmm. Uh, so, apparently there are qu quite, quite a few things, um, I, okay, what, what part of Italy do they have me as? It's Sardinian. Hmm. Do you like sardines? I like sardines sometimes, and crackers, you know, as long as they're not too bony. It's, sorry. So. If I go to Italy, I guess I gotta go to Sardinia. <sighs> your DNA suggests that you are 1.5% of your ancestry is Italian. I was kind of expecting more if this showed up, to tell you the truth. Yeah. 
So let's see what this says. Yeah. It, it just talks about Italy, man. I know about Italy. Sheesh. Just says Italian. Uh, there were some Germanic people. They showed up in the early Middle Ages. But before that, there were some Italians. The Etruscans, Romans, you know, Italians. They have pasta. They feed people. Italians. All right. So, um... So that means that the broadly Southern European, we're going to separate that out from the Sardinian. I don't know why you would separate those out, but okay. So like 3% total Southern European, broadly European, which and then the trace ancestry at 0.7%, which is African. Um, which is easily, you know, if you live in Crete or Sardinia or Greece or Italy or how hard is it to like take a boat around some places and sell some goods and end up with a wife, you know, anyway, all right, I don't know why I'm speaking with this accent. I'm going to talk to y'all later. Thanks so much for watching this video. It's been 35 minutes. I gotta go. All right. Have a good day. And, and I'll follow this up at some point, soon, when I probably upload it, shortly after that. Okay, take care. Thanks for watching Mystic Ashram. This is Megan Finley signing off. And it is currently Thursday, 11.22 a.m. at, uh, let's see, what's the date? It's like November 21st. Okay, November 21st. So... Happy Sagittarius! <laughs> May it be an adventure around the world.